everybody, I'm Lisanne Miller with W. Cushing & Company, and we're here today with In the Library with Lisanne. And this is a new series. It will air the 15th of every month at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're going to go over different books. Some books are available, some books are not available. Some books you may have on your shelves and you haven't dusted the shelves for a while, and take a new look at the books as we're hooking today. It's getting to be winter, soon it'll be Halloween, then Thanksgiving, and then the deep snows will come in, and it's time to cuddle up with a good book and a cup of tea. And of course, your favorite cat. So, the first thing that we're gonna go over today, the first book is a little book, it's called Rag Rugs of New England and America. And this was done by Emma Tennant. It's, a, it's from the Decorative Arts Library, and it's a, it's a little book, but it's a little book packed with a lot of things. And it gets overlooked quite a bit, um, but it's not. It's an interesting book. It's an interesting book on history. But I'm just going to turn into the inside front cover here. And look at this inside front cover. Look at the two. Look at the moon. Look at the sun. The way they hook the face. It's just adorable. It's a good reference tool for you. It shows you how to do it, how to do it correctly. And with little, col with little shading, little color. This is one of my favorite paintings. Uh, this is a British painting that you can barely see, probably. It's very dark in the book. And it shows a clipped rug or a proddy rug. And this is an old, old painting when you get the book. Make sure you look in here and look at the painting, everything around it, and read it. Uh, it, it. It gives you the whole demeanor for the book. It's just wonderful. Um, this book goes through the old tools, the new tools. Okay, so here's the old tools and the new tools. It shows you very different rugs. This happens to be a beautiful rug, a union rug. Okay. It shows you, look at the border. I want to go back and look at the border, how it's uh, uneven, just lovely, uh, really lovely. And there's a story about the rug hooking coming here, how it traveled. Uh, it, it's just a good documentary book, but it's also a good visual book. Here's an old rug. Great rug. The use of color. Now, this is one of my favorite things right here we're gonna look at. Look at these houses, and those that have seen pictures, this is a hooked rug from New England, and look at the houses, look at the trees, not a lot of color, maybe four or five stripes and a brown. The way the house is outlined, the use of the color, uh, it is just wonderful. And if you're going to hook a village or hook trees, this is a great reference. Uh, it's a good reference. And we have a lot of pictorials. Dark, light, you have to look through them. Uh, some geometrics. Some we've seen before. We even get into some scrolls and roses. Okay, and rag rugs. And they are rag rugs. Most of these were rag rugs. Uh, here is a, a neat thing. Uh, the revitalized... Uh, the re the revitalizing of hooked rugs and the arts and crafts movement. And I think that explains, this one picture explains what this chapter is about, how the arts and crafts movement really did revitalize hooked rugs and especially geometric hooked rugs. So it's a great reference book. A lot of these rugs you've seen facsimiles of, look at this great rag rug down the bottom but it reintroduces it to you in a nice way. It's a beautifully written book. Uh, this book was only available in Britain. We had sold out here. Uh, this, is, this is a lot of fun. Uh, look at the chicken. Look at that chicken. Look at the eggs around there. Just great, great. Uh, so I was able to get a few copies of the book and we will have them up. And we even get into um, the Grenfell designs, and this is an unusual Grenfell design. So if you want to learn more about fashionable folk rugs, where, how the rugs came to be, uh, this is a sheared rug, and look at that sheared rug. It says 18 something on it, and 
it, it's just wonderful. But it also gives you a good synopsis, a good history. And this is the glossary of rugging terms. And I really like that. And if you feel like, um, just say you're in Yorkshire or in Scotland, there's a Taddy, a Proddy, or a Peggy rug. Really great information. Uh, and it's wonderful. Again, this was available in Britain. We got it brought over here. And we do have a few available. But wonderful rag rugs of England and America. Great overview, great history, great reference pictures. Uh, the back cover is, again, one of my favorite showing the outline, how they hook the windows, and look how they did the lines in the trees. But just a great book, great book. Of course, my next favorite book, I couldn't open this up without my favorite book of all, Rugs for My Red Cape by Edith O'Neill. This hap this when I read this book from cover to cover and I didn't put it down, it changed the way I hooked. And I was able to thank Edith O'Neill in person. It was a great moment for me great moment for me. If you are unfamiliar with this book and her rugs, you need to become familiar whether you want to hook in this style or not. This is a book of how to, how to lay the colors out, how to do the puzzle pieces. Uh, you don't have, it applies to any size cut when outlines are needed to separate a light from a light. Uh, you know, it goes light, dark, medium, light. How to get that look. All these different colors put in. And these are all patterns we are familiar with. These patterns are available through Nimble Thimble in Texas. So they are available. This is a beautiful, beautiful flower. Um, and she goes through how she what's a strong color, what's a weak color, outline, how she put the light in, separating the border, the lines. Uh, she, Edith was very good, very, very good about sharing all her information, uh, how she did certain things to achieve a look. And she also was one of the first people uh, and, this, and this maybe not, but for me, she was one of the first people to show a pattern hooked two different ways in two different styles to tell you that there's more than one style to hook a rug and to pick your style that fits what you like or what goes in your home. Another beautiful beautiful study in sales, how not to do them straight across. The whale, this is in my stash to hook. Someday I will hook it. I think I wanna do a barn board whale, but love this pattern. If you wanna play with colors, if you wanna play with higgly piggly, this is a great pattern. She tells you how to do it. She tells you the different wools. Pumpkin house, fabulous absolutely fabulous everybody you see the plaid in the back that was used and there's edith wonderful edith so there's a lot in this book whether you hook primitives or not about just even balancing the flower color balancing the colors uh how they should work how they should be she has the bed rug in here uh, that Trisha Travis hooked many years ago. But even that with the balance and the baskets and how to hook them, how to add color in. Now this is the squirrels. And this is, this actually we called this wool Ron's favorite plaid. He loved this plaid uh, when it was available. And how she used it in different pieces. It's really nice. Um, really well written. It applies to this day and it's got the basics but it also has a lot more than that here's the Oliver Cromwell ship how she hooked up into here adding in the greens the blues and the purples you can see how it went against her wall um, and notice her water is not blue it's green 
how these are little whales and everything that are hidden in there. Again, any size cut, anything that you would like. It's not just for primitive rug hookers. This is not just for primitive rug hookers. So this book, uh, I believe if you go up on her blog, can be done in a PDF download if you are so inclined. We do have a few copies. This book is very, very hard to get, so if you have it, hold on to it. We do have a few copies that we will have up on our website. All the books will be available on the website. Um, and this is one thing I wanted to show you. I was looking for this on page 94. This is one of her trees. And if you look at how this was hooked, and every a lot of people have trouble with trees. This is how I studied and learned how to hook trees for the first time. There's a lot of different colors, but look how she went around in a circle around she didn't go up and down she layered the colors right on top to create that tree and if it doesn't matter the cut it doesn't matter if it's texture or dyed the direction of hooking the things that we talk about and the colors and how they sit up this is a great visual i know a lot of us love the visuals we need the visuals and that is one thing that taught me how to hook trees so Rugs for My Red Cape, to me, if you don't have it, you should have it. it it's a, just a necessity. Um, it's timeless. This book is absolutely timeless. And it also goes in a little bit into the antiques, but it's really a good, good reference book. Hard to get. Some of them are signed. Some of them aren't but just a great book. I wouldn't have, I, this is one book I would say if you had to have in your library, have this book into your library. Again, if you need the patterns, they're available through Nimble Thimble, Katie Hartner. So if you fall in love with the patterns, then you can also get them as well. So these are the two first books that I chose. I chose them because they're books that I use. Uh, they're books that I use to reference. They're books that I use to teach from. Uh, they're books that you can also learn from and learn the use of outline, when to use it, when to not, uh, how to balance a multitude of colors in your background without making it look choppy. Just different things right down to the pine tree. So I hope that In the Library with Lisanne will be beneficial to you, that you've learned something, or that you've decided you need another book or relook at a book in your library. And we'll bring another set of books next month. If you have any books you'd like me to look at or talk about, just email us at orders at wcushing.com, and we'd be happy to. So I hope everybody is well. I hope everybody's getting ready for our favorite season, Pumpkin Spice, a.k.a. Fall. And we'll see you next month. Bye for now.